Right. Uh, where do we begin? Whenever I look at walls, at the kind of black, grey, solid, thick stone walls, I think of an arcali. An arcali is a part of our public imagination in India. She's a story. She's a metaphor. She was a servant, a slave girl, really, in the times that the Emperor Akbar lived. According to legend, the Crown Prince, Prince Salim, fell in love with an Arkali as a result of this love affair and as punishment for daring to love above her station, an Arkali was walled up alive. Twenty hours since they pushed the last stone in place. The air is stale. Her head is light. The men who raised these stone walls, they looked into her eyes with pity. Surely one of them would have left a gap somewhere. But no, not even a hundredth of an inch. Who would risk the displeasure of the Emperor of Hindustan? I never stopped being bothered by the way it ended, the fact that she had to be punished and that the punishment was so truly awful to be walled up alive and left there to slowly suffocate to death, alone and in the dark. So what if Anarkali could have a different end? Her toes curl into the mud. It is the only part of her that touches soft earth instead of the hard stone. Then she hears it. And is earth separate from stone? She lifts her head. Nobody here. Not even an ant. Again, that dark, sweet voice. Listen. Why do you not move? It's a cruel question. Why? Because I've been walled up alive. The question of elements really appeals to me. What are we made of? What are things made of? Finally, all of us are just matter. It's just a different density, different consistency. If you mix water with something else, it becomes a third thing. Your skin, your bones, all of them are just different kinds of matter. She may not have the strength to break things down. What if she had the strength to merge with things? Anarkali presses herself against the wall until a white heat rises from under her feet, traveling up her body until her eyes are a furnace. Suddenly, the stone yields. She is inside the wall. Now? What now? There is no reply. Anarkali turns her head and finds that she can move. Once they did a survey and of men and women and asked what superpower they'd like. It was interesting that a lot of women, almost the majority, wanted the superpower of invisibility. That they thought that to not be seen was a great power. Salim's room is surrounded by gardens and the palace guards. It is risky, but now she will not be stopped. Earth is no different from stone. She will walk under the earth to enter Salim's room. Narkali? She explains. There is no time to waste. She has found a way out of the fort. Anarkali has not walked through walls for nothing. The prince must come with her. She takes his hand. What are you doing? She moves into the wall. She digs in her heels and pulls with all her might. In some ways it's very contemporary because that story of forbidden love and punishment is being played out again and again and again, even in India now. Salim is frozen. His body is resisting too much. She reminds him, keep breathing. Stone breathes too, you know.
they have a very long walk ahead the alarm will be raised soon the fort will be sealed the cavalry will be scattered in all directions she will find valleys rivers forests she will teach salim to listen to the earth soon he will see how easy it is to walk away from palaces and never look back